Math 152, we're going to take a look at our second part of section 2.2. We're still thinking about the area between two curves. And so let's say that this graph, and I've got some curve that looks like this, and some other curve that looks something like this. Now, if I wanted to do the area between uh, those curves, I could, I, we've been talking about like, I would go this one that's the black one minus this one that is the, I'm going to call it blue one, and we get the area this way. And notice if we do that, we're kind of thinking in um, this direction. And so we would do that relative to x. We, as x is changing, what is it? But sometimes it's more convenient for us to go the other direction. In other words, to think about it uh, this way. In other words, in terms of y. So if I was going to set this one up, um, my function would not be in terms of x, it would be in terms of y. In other words, y is my input, x is my output. Notice what I'm doing then is I'm looking at this would be my a value, and this height here would be my b value. <laughs> Draw that back in there. This height in here would be my b value. So I would say something like um, the integral from a to b. And now notice I'm looking towards the y axis. So I would have g of y minus f of y. And my derivative would be relative to y. So let me give you. Uh, an example that's going to feel a little more, a little more concrete. Got a couple functions here and here, and I can find where they intercept pretty easily. One one and uh, four negative two. And now, if I wanted the area between these two uh, lines, if I did this relative to x, notice I'd have to. I, I would take like the it, underneath this. Man, it's, it's just a crazy amount of work uh, doing it that way. So I think that what I would do instead is I'm going to take it relative to y. So first off, um, I would get my equations as in like x equals y squared. We're used to saying like y equals x squared, but we'll write them this way. We'll say x's are in terms of y. So it's solved for the x. And so now if I want to find the, this area in here, notice... I'm running from, I'm looking at y values, a height of negative 2 to a height of 1. So my, in, my integral would run from negative 2 to 1. And then it would be this one minus that one. And then my derivative would be in terms of y, right, as y is changing. Great. So then I could say, OK, I'll do my integral. And then I could take that and I could uh, evaluate it. Put it into y here. And I'm just going to say, use my x's instead of y's. So I'll just say 2x, 1 half, whatever the variable is, squared, uh, minus 1 third of that variable cubed. And it's uh, 1 is the. Right, negative two is the bottom, and it comes out to four. So it's really just like what we're doing relative to x, but now it's relative to y instead. So let's do a couple more of these. So uh, we're looking for the area between these two curves. It can be hard to maybe graph these or maybe try and uh, graph them by hand or visualize them, but what's fortunate is uh, Desmos has no problem with this. There's that one, uh, x, and I get something that looks like this. Wow, interesting. And I'll, I'm going to put these on here. We could solve for them if we wanted. Notice we're running it. We're going to run this in the y direction. If we're running the x direction, we'd have to break it up this way, break it up that way. Y direction is much more convenient. So I'm going to snip it, this area in here. And notice that um, this is that one, and this is that one. 
So we are going to run it from negative one to one. And it's this one minus this one. But then our derivative is relative to y. And you know, you can run it that way. I actually, and there's nothing wrong with that, but I kind of I notice that this shape has some symmetry. In other words, if I like just look at the top half, that's a reflection of the bottom half. So it feels to me like it might be a little less work. And this is at zero, just to double, just to take this part and double. That's just me trying to find a way that I think might be a little simpler. Well, let's see what happens. What I like about this is the zero, plug in the zero, and it just, those are all zero. So that part doesn't matter. And if I plug in a one, it's just those values, right? Because they're just times one. And I can do this in my calculator. Um, it's two and 14 fifteenths, but it ends up being, it's about 2.9. Uh, it is actually with the repeating, I think. So there we go. There's that one. Again, notice it's all the same work. We're just doing it this direction in terms of how y is changing instead of in terms of how x is changing. And it's really a matter of convenience. Take a peek at this one. There's our graph. And we're just doing this part between these two, where these intersect at zero and then at 27, nine. So uh, if we're doing it relative to X, we would have everything solved for Y and we do the red one minus the, uh, minus the blue one, but we're not, we're, we're gonna do it relative to Y. So notice we're running from zero to nine, right? Those Y values. And this one that looks blue to me is the 3y minus, look at this, it's not solved for x. So uh, I need it solved for x in order to throw it in there. So if I think about x squared equals y cubed, I can square root both sides. Um, three halves, right? Square. This would be this, and a square root is the same as a one half power. So that's this, power two, power you multiply. So it's this. And notice it's plus or minus. The plus side, uh, the minus side is this side and the plus side is that side. So really we can just grab the positive one because that's the only part that we're worried about. And so that is gonna be a y to the three halves minus y to the three halves. And again, dy, relative to our change in y, relative to our change in that direction. And then uh, I'll leave you to do that one. It does end up being about 24. Uh, 0.3. One last example I want to point out. I've got uh, y equals cosine of x and y equals e to the x. Hello, Desmos. These ones are solved for y, so I think that these will be uh, relative to, to x. And so it's that. We're going to deal with this little section right here. And what I want you to notice is if we set these equal to each other, cosine of x equals e to the x. Um, probably not too sure how to solve those. So on problems like this, where we just have to do an, we have to do some numeric method to get at it, just graph it and see where they're at. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, wherever, whatever that means, negative 1.293. We're looking for this area in here. Oh, it's relative to it's all for y, so it's actually going to be. And then if I set this one up down here at this, and this is going to be an approximation, right? So I know that that is not exact. Um, and it goes to one. I, I'm sorry, it goes to zero, right? It's x. And this one is my cosine. This is e to the x. And it's relative to x. It's, it's as x is changing. And then um, you know how to do those. You'd work that out. You get about 2.4 and you're good to go. All right. Give these a try. I know a much shorter lecture than last time, but um, I do. It's really important for us to start thinking about are we doing it relative to Y or are we doing it relative to X?
sometimes it's easier one way or another. And it actually, we're gonna we're gonna push to it to the next um, piece that we're gonna work on. Hey, give those that the problem set a try. Send me any questions you have. Message me or post them in the uh, in the forum.